What's going on, Grace family? Welcome to my YouTube channel, God's Good Grace Ministry. I am Evangelist Jeff Wiley, and we're going to pick up on part two of Holy Spirit then and now. We talked about how the Holy Spirit was very active in the Old Testament, that it had a different role than it does today, that it came upon certain people, kings, judges, and prophets, and that it came to help people um, to do earthly tasks because the people were spiritually dead, so they could not understand God. Flesh cannot receive uh, or uh, understand God, but the, that which is spirit is spirit, and that which is flesh is flesh. And we understood that 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 Saul had the spirit of God upon him, and he was a new man and had a new heart. But then he stopped leaning on God. He stopped following God's uh, instructions carefully, and the spirit was lifted off of him. And David was anointed and the Spirit came upon him. And we're going to take up right there. And we're going to take up right there where the Spirit of God came on people to take care of God's uh, task to do the thing that God needed to be done. But it wanted to give them revelation. Now, the Holy Spirit is here to testify of Jesus and reprove the world of sin. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing now in the New Testament. is testifying of what Jesus said. And Jesus came and said, I only do what the Father said, what I hear my Father say. So the Holy Spirit is here just echoing all that and to reprove the world of sin. If we turn to John chapter 15, verse 26, it says, but when the Comforter is come, he will... I, who I'm, I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. John chapter 16 verse 8, it says, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. See, this is a good spot for me to transition into the Holy Spirit. For today, today for us believers, just like in the Old Testament, only special people can receive the Spirit of God. Remember last week I said only special people in the Old Testament had the Spirit of God come upon them. And that happens today. Only certain people can have the Holy Spirit dwell in them. And you know who they are? These are people are born again believers on Jesus Christ. You have to be born again and you have to be a believer on Jesus Christ. Because this spirit is the key for great relationship with Christ. God said if you have none of his spirit, if you don't have his spirit, you don't, you're none of his. You don't belong to him. Ezekiel prophesies about the Holy Spirit about the coming of the Holy Spirit. In chapter 11, verse 19. In chapter 36, verses 25 to 27. In chapter 37, verse 14. And in chapter 39, 29. It talks about the outpouring of the Spirit. But for time's sake, we're going to read to To build our foundation. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 to 27 says... A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statue, and you shall keep my judgment and do them. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 29 said, Neither will I hide my face anymore from thee. For I will pour out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. See, I want you to pay attention to some key words. New spirit. Put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh. Cause you to walk in my statue. And you shall keep my judgments. And the last one, 
do them. See, this got me thinking, if the Holy Spirit had a resume today, <laughs> it would probably sound something like this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I will put this new spirit in you. I will take away your heart that used to be dead and cold towards me because of darkness and give you a heart that is alive and able to receive my sin. Because of this new spirit and heart, it will cause you to turn right and go straight. And when you hear the words of life, your heart will cause you to confess your faith. And your faith will cause you to do them. Amen, amen. Who here wouldn't receive that? Is the Holy Spirit higher? Will you receive the Holy Spirit today? Is that resume good enough for you? And check this out. He will never leave us or take his spirit away. I said it, so let me build upon it. Turn with me to John chapter 14, verses 17 and 18. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but ye know him. For he dwells with you. He dwells with me. And he shall be in you. And Within you, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. See, the spirit of truth dwells with you and in you. How exciting is that? How exciting that, that we got this spirit that dwells in us. We don't longer have to worry about it coming upon us to do certain things and then leave. It's here to stay, great family. The Holy Spirit will never leave you. Never. Matthew 28, 20 says, Teach them to observe all things, whosoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always unto the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. We have a promise that the Holy Spirit will dwell in us and be with us until the end. Until the end. That right there should cause your hope and your joy to go through the roof. You can hope in that and have faith for that. You can have right now faith for that word right there. That the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And it will never leave you comfortless. It will be with you until the end of the world. Amen. And watch this. I'm going to throw some icing on the cake. And it's sealed. God sealed it. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 113. In whom ye also trusted, after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit a promise. You know what this is telling me? This is telling me many things. But one thing is telling me that after you received the spirit of truth, God gave it a stamp of approval. Then he sealed it from the world influence, protecting it, protecting what's in your spirit. God said, you know what? I'm going to give him this spirit. I'm going to give him the fullness of this spirit. And once I give it to him, I'm going to seal it and stamp it. I approve 100%. Guaranteed. I approve. This is awesome. That's why I love the word of God because it's so encouraging, so impactful. And it said, in this seal, it's protecting what's in your spirit. And what's in your spirit? You got the spirit of power and of love. In a sound mind. Spirit of love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Come on. You are strong. So we don't need Jesus to unseal us and give us and give you and I more love. 
We just need to release what's in our spirit. We don't need more faith. Release what you have. We don't need more of God's spirit. We have the fullness of the spirit fully anointed. If we didn't have the fullness of the spirit of God, we would have to, God would have to leave us unsealed so he could add more later. Think about that. If you didn't have the fullness of God, then God wouldn't have sealed it. He had to leave it uncapped so he could put more in and more in. Because what do you do with something that's sealed? That means it's complete. It's finished. It's finished. You know, if I, if, if I feel a, a jar of jam, when it get to the top, I, I, I tighten it and I seal it. I can't put no more in it. It's filled. It's done. It's done. So by faith, we have this spirit, this dynamite power, this dunamis, and it must be released from the inside out. You can't live from the outside in. You got to live from the inside out. You got to know it's already there. You got to acknowledge every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus, and you just got to let it flow. You got to let it run from out. Rivers of living water flowing, springing up from the inside. That's the Holy Spirit. God was talking about the Holy Spirit that was to come. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 through 10 says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. You are complete in him. You're not incomplete. You're not, you don't have a dwarf spirit. You don't have an incomplete spirit. You are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And in John chapter, uh, in 1 John chapter 4 verse 17 tells us that as he is, so are we in this world. Right now, your spirit is the same spirit as Jesus, and in Jesus dwell all the fullness, and that's what dwells in you and I. That's what dwells in you and I. We both have that same spirit dwelling in us. It's not like in the Old Testament when they had when they had the spirit of knowledge and wisdom. And God put that in their heart. But it was only to do certain things. Certain things. But we have the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelling in us. Jesus is for us. We are fully anointed. If you turn to the Psalms chapter 23, 25, it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my, enemy, my enemies. Thy anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you something. Take a cup. Close your, your eyes. See it with your spirit. Take a cup and then have God pour. And matter the water is just anointed. Once it get to the top, it's capped. That's it. But God said it's running over. So basically, you don't need no more anointing because you're running over with anointing. You don't have to. You don't have to pray. God, give me more anointing. You're running over. You're so running. You're so anointed that it's running over. In this life, you can't get no more anointed than you are right now. Just walk in this anointing, which is in your new. Righteous, born again, full with fullness, sealed with the Holy Spirit, a promised spirit. Why we need the Holy Spirit and the receiving of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues? If you didn't know that I am a tongue speaker, I will cover that in another teaching because I don't have time to get into all that right now. Because my goal was to show you the difference between the Holy Spirit then and now. How the, how the, how the Holy, Holy Spirit operated then and now. You know, a lot of people, and I believe that you could pray wrong. If you pray, Lord God, don't never leave me, don't never say, that's a, that's a non, that's not, a, that's a word, that's a prayer that's not working in your favor. Because God already promised he'll never leave you, you know say. So why are you praying that prayer as, as, as if he's going to leave you tomorrow? 
You don't, you don't have to pray, God, just like Elijah, just like you did with Elijah. Please give me a double portion of the of, of more spirit of your spirit. You don't, you don't have to pray that prayer. They didn't have the fullness of the spirit. You now have that. To pray that prayer is, is not working in your favor. You already have, you are anointed, you're, you're running over. You have the, the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in you. And you are complete, complete in him. You're not incomplete, you're complete in him. So you don't have to pray that prayer. I don't know if y'all know who Andrew Womack is, but he got a, a teacher on a better way to pray. And ever since I learned that teaching, I learned those, those things, I pray differently. And things are working in my favor because I know what I now have. I don't waste my time saying, Lord, come down and be in my house and go with me, Lord. And uh, he's with me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. I go in the prayer and I say, Lord God, I thank you that you're with me, Lord God. I thank you that I have the promise that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. That, that perfect love casts out fear. Lord God, I thank you that you go before me, Lord God, and you, and you come to bring me into my future. That the thoughts that you have towards me are, good, are thoughts of good and not evil. You know, Lord, that, 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 that you empower me with this power, with this dunamis power. That's how I pray. That's, that's how I change my thinking. My goal here was to show you the difference between the old spirit and the operating. Today, we don't need more anointing. We don't need a double portion of the spirit. We don't need to ask God to send his spirit with us or pray, please don't lead or take your spirit away. Old Testament, that was that was that was good. Please don't cast your presence away, or take thy spirit from me. Oh Lord God, give me a double portion. That was that was an old testament, old testament prayer, and that was suitable for them. Because as you can see in Scripture, the spirit came and the spirit left. Saul had the spirit leave because of disobedience. Others had the spirit leave after a task was done. Other people had the spirit come on on kings and judges and prophets. But you and I now, we have it come in us and dwells in us. It's within us. We have the fullness. And I'm about to, I'm about to end this with this. Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 19. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Let's think about that for a second before I finish it. Jesus told them that. Jesus told them, it says right here, and Jesus came and he spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. All power up there, all power for down here. Whatever you need to bring the spirit world into your life, God has it. Whatever you need for the earthly life, God have to. So he said, go ye therefore. Therefore me, because of this power, go. Because I now have all power in heaven and earth, go. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That same power is what is working in our lives. All power. And all means all. Nothing like it. You know, if you look up all, all in Greek and in the Hebrew, it means all. <laughs> all. Nothing missing. All in all. Grace family, I hope this helps somebody. I hope this helps you to recognize that you don't have to pray those prayers that they prayed in the Old Testament about please don't leave me. Please don't take your spirit from me. Give me a double portion. You know, when I go to speak, I don't even have to ask God to anoint me. I'm already anointed. I don't pray, Lord, give me more anointing as I try to bring, I bring your message from. No, I'm already anointed. He has already anointed. I can pray, Lord, God, help me to, to flow in your anointing, to recognize your anointing. But I don't have to ask for anointing. He says, my cup is running over with anointing. It's running over. 
You have an abundant life. It's, you have a life abundantly running over. He said that, that he will cause men to give into your bosom. Press down, shaking together, but he caused men to give into your bosom. Running over. Everything that God does, it runs over. Why? And it's a little nugget, a little rabbit trail, like, like uh, Barry Benedict would say. The reason we have an overflow, so it can flow to the next person. So it can flow to the next person. So we're left without an excuse that we don't have enough. I don't have enough in me to help my neighbor. I don't have enough in me to, to counsel my mother. I don't have enough left in me to, to, to hold my family together. No. I am running over with anointing. I, I have the fullness of the Godhead in me. I have promises that he'll never leave me. It is sealed with God's approval. It is protected from this world of influences. It's God's righteous spirit, not mine. It's not mine. When I wake up in the morning before I do anything, I'm righteous. Before I do anything, I'm righteous. And if I fall, I'm righteous. Because it's his spirit, not mine. And Jesus sees me in the spirit. Grace family, I love you. I appreciate you. And I, and I hope this really helps somebody. May 16th, we'll be starting our Bible study at my house. If you want to be involved with it, if you're in the Orlando area and you want to be involved with it, please leave me a message and I will contact you. And I'll get your email address and I'll be sending out an email as we get closer and we're going to be studying spirit, soul, and body. Until next time, I love you. And remember, God is always with you.